in the sports space for Caitlin Clark, January, February, March. I don't know. But this new three-on-three basketball league, which is actually backed by $100 million. Let me say that again. TNT is putting in $100 million. $100 million. It's spearheaded by 2024 NBA Finals. Brianna Stewart, big name. And someone named Napisa, I don't know what the hell her name is, Collier. And it's going to begin in Miami, which, look, if you're trying to get young women and young men to do something, Miami's pretty attractive. It's going to be for the 2025 WNBA season tips off. Fans are speculating about Caitlin Clark. Obviously, she's the golden goose. Not only should they beg Caitlin Clark to be in, but they should give her part of the $100 million, like a big part, and say, please, baby, please. But I don't know. There is a lot of speculation. There are apparently two final player spots to fill out rosters. Now, there's really one. There's really one spot because if you're the WNBA and or the Unrivaled League, you kind of sort of want to make sure you got a spot for Caitlin Clark. Imagine I want to play. Well, we, we, we filled up all the spots. We got uh, Nakisha Smith and Sally Jones ready to rock and roll. We can't. We don't have you. Oh, please. No, 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 no. It's the Golden Goose. And what makes this fascinating is it's going to be a little bit of a test of whether Caitlin Clark's juice extends and keeps extending. If I'm Caitlin Clark's dad and mom, and we're having a conversation, it would be interesting. I'm sure she's going to get a lot of money, which you might as well make it when you can. We're all hired guns. But do you you want to cheapen this? And do you want to play year-round? I don't know. I don't know, but here's the deal. Unrivaled has announced a multi-year sponsorship with State Farm making them our exclusive home and auto insurance sponsor, all right, as well as the presenting sponsor for our highly anticipated club selection announcement, meaning who's on what team. It's set to release Wednesday, November 20th. Well, guess what? Today's Wednesday, November 20th. Fans have put two and two together and think it's nailed on Clark will be one of the final two plays announced by Unrivaled. You kind of, sort of got to have Clark. Yeah, you kind of do. I mean, my guess is Hoochie Girl, Angel Reese, will see this, take off her clothes, and try to get in the league. But she won't matter if Clark isn't in the league. Yeah, there'll be some dudes that are trying to get with Angel Reese coming to games, but it ain't. she's the barnacle. Caitlin Clark is the ship. Clark has a major endorsement deal with State Farm. So let me stop you right there. She's playing. No, no, no. She's playing. You will see an announcement today that Caitlin Clark is going to join this league. We can clip this off, and maybe I'm wrong. But if you have, and it is a major endorsement deal, you're going to see, like you did last year, once college basketball gets rock and rolling, you're going to see so much of Caitlin Clark on State Farm commercials. It's going to make you want to blow your head up. But anyway, she has this major endorsement deal. You all may have seen the commercials that aired for months during March Madness in the NBA playoffs. Kaylin Clark is so joining Unrivaled, one fan posted. The rookie phenomenon has yet to publicly announce her commitment to Unrivaled. Oh, really? I mean, is Kaylin Clark still a thing? Like, I get it among little girls, but man, in Indy, I got to tell you, I've kind of had enough. I've kind of had enough of her and Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Halliburton hadn't played worth a damn. Pacers haven't been very good, and yet he's always everywhere. Like, hey, shut up. Become Michael Jordan. Become Kobe. Get in the gym and then do all that stuff. Here's the deal with Caitlin Clark. Though. Let's look at some things. Iowa basketball. Let's take the WNBA out of it. Wintertime. Iowa basketball. It was reported this week that ESPN2 drew 209,000 viewers for the Iowa-Virginia Tech game. That's Iowa's most recent game against Toledo. Meanwhile, they had 136 viewers on Big Ten Network. Let's reference. Last year, Iowa drew 583,000 viewers for their first game of the 23.4 season. Just a reminder of how impactful it has been over the last few years. Last season, 18.7 million viewers watched Iowa's Title game 
against South Carolina. If you don't include the Olympics, it was the second most watched women's sporting event in United States history. Let me say that again. If you don't include the Olympics, it was the second largest viewing audience of a women's sporting event, and this is where it gets sexy to me, in United States history. So let me put two and two together for you, WNBA fans. A new basketball league is opening up. It's down in Miami. State Farm, who is Caitlin Clark's sugar daddy, is the main sponsor, Hunter Million. And she ain't playing? Oh, no. See, here's the deal. There's always a backstory. I tell you, there's always a backstory because there's always a backstory. Here's the backstory. Caitlin Clark already has decided to play in this. It isn't like State Farm decided to give them money in hopes that Caitlin Clark plays. Au contraire. State Farm, it's not like everything happens in a bubble. It's not the cone of silence. Those of you that are old enough to watch Get Smart, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, it's not like they haven't talked. I guarantee you one came before the other. Clark agreed. State Farm committed. Guarantee it. Now that Clark is no longer playing college hoops, the WNBA is benefiting from her popularity. If she continues to develop properly with the Indiana Fever, the league will reach new heights In no time. Well, I would argue, the spun, that the league has reached new heights in no time. Let's think about it. The only thing that I can compare this to, the only thing, is when Bird and Magic came into the league in 1979 80. 1979, Bird Magic played national championship game, Indiana State versus Michigan State. Highest rated basketball game ever. I don't know if it's been surpassed, and I'm going very recently. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. I don't know. But you get my point. Here came Caitlin Clark. I'll give Angel Reese. I'll give the Barnacle. With Bird and Magic, there was no Barnacle. They were both superstars. Angel Reese is a made-up superstar, but we're going to put her in there because it fits, right? Black, white, national, all that kind of stuff. But long story short, the league took off. NBA took off from having tape delayed. Now, I want you to think about this. Tape delayed games. NBA final was played at 7 or 8. They didn't show it on the networks until 10, 30, 11 when it was over. Think about that. Bird Magic came in. Here we go. Isaiah came in. Here we go. Ewing, Jordan came in. Here we go. Nationally known figures. See, here's the deal. Back then, to make the NBA great, players had A brand, not a brand like today where they take off their clothes, show their ass, or do something on TikTok. No. I'm talking about a brand from being in the Olympics, maybe Jordan. A brand from winning a national championship, Jordan and Isaiah and Magic. A brand from being somebody in college basketball three or four years like Larry Burt, Patrick Ewick. No, they had a brand. Now players don't have a brand, but Caitlin Clark does. And that's one of the things that has made the growth of the WNBA explode And I got to tell you, it's one of the things that's going to make this unrivaled explode or at least be successful in its first year. Without Caitlin Clark, they got no shot. With Caitlin Clark, shot. It's like I used to tell players. Working hard doesn't guarantee success, but not working hard guarantees failure. Caitlin Clark doesn't necessarily guarantee success in the unrivaled league, but not having Caitlin Clark guarantees failure favor. Hey, let's move it over to Jerry Jones and the Cowboys. I told you we were taking a break from football, but we're not going anywhere. Football is king, and I haven't even talked about Indiana and all the stupidity that's going on in my television about IU football and Ohio State. Don't get me started. I'll get to it. Cowboys, well, owner, general manager, vice president, main drafter, probably de facto coach, Jerry Jones dismisses as nonsense, oh boy, that Mike McCarthy has lost the team. See, the lost the team thing is stupid. Like, it ain't Mike McCarthy's fault that they put a bunch of jackass front runners together on the Dallas Cowboys. It ain't Mike McCarthy's fault that when things hit the proverbial fan, everybody went south. It ain't Mike McCarthy's fault that everybody that Jerry Jones put and gave big money contracts to is kind of... I don't know, just a guy. 
talented, a lot of talented guys out there, but just a guy. Here's what I mean. I mentioned Kobe and I referenced Jordan earlier, right? Here's the deal. Those guys work like dogs. I mean dogs. I mean crazy ass dogs. And you know what? They got better. They got better. Not only better, they got historically great. Well, I don't see that out of the Cowboys. I watched a game the other day, and I told you this. I made a bet. I took the Cowboys plus seven. I saw the first play, a touchdown by Nico Collins. Now, before the flag, I was watching the Cowboys. They didn't look like they gave a rat's ass. They're, I immediately, I put. A, I think I made this. Uh, said this wrong yesterday. I had $100, 110 to win 100 plus seven Cowboys. Saw the first play, turned it around, put 200 on the Texans. I did. I mean, I figured I'm going to win. Cowboys had no shot. Cowboys didn't try. Cowboys didn't care. I don't know about losing a locker room. That's for other people. I know this. That locker room is full of crap. That locker room is full of horse bleep. That locker room is full of, well, let's put it this way, overhyped, leaderless, rudderless clowns. And I'm including all the legends. No, I mean, Zach Martin is it? Oh, shut up. He's been there forever. What's he done? Has he ever straightened the locker room out? He's a big, fat lineman. He's from here in Indy. His mommy was on national commercials telling everybody when CTE was all the rage, go play football. Stupid. Anyway, Zach Martin, all of you, you suck. You suckle at the teat of the National Football League and its audience. Every freaking day we got to talk about you. I ain't mad about it. Uh, Here it is. He, He, where Jones affirmed, The music he is listening to is his regret about making two in-season coaching changes as the Cowboys are off to the worst 10-game start since 2020 where Dak broke his ankle. Apparently, Dak Prescott's pretty important to the Cowboys, really. It's nonsense, lost the locker room. Remember John Madden, L. Davis, called me after we won one game the very first year and said, well, at least you didn't lose the team or the locker room. I said, well, what's that? How do you lose a team? You lost a team. No, no, no. You lost the team. I don't know you did, but the team you put together did not compete. It didn't. If you watch guys, they didn't run hard. They didn't hustle. They didn't. How do you lose a team? You misplaced them on the road or what? I'm not trying to be cute here. Yeah, you are. But they said, well, you don't lose it. I can tell you right now, with the kind of careers a bunch of those guys have, the kind of prospects of their futures, the kind of competitors there are, I don't worry one ounce about losing anything. As far as in the family or losing a team, well, you're wrong. Losing a team is an easy statement, and you see it on TV a lot, but nobody defines it. Let me define it for you, okay? Losing a team means your team plays well for a little bit and then goes away at the end big time. Losing a team means you don't watch the ball, you watch the players. Are they going full speed? Are they hustling? Are they diving in or are they backing up? And that's all I saw out of the Cowboys. You watch the body language of C.D. Lamb. I'd get rid of C.D. Lamb tomorrow, and you'd be criticized for it, and everybody would be mad. But you know what? What's DeAndre Hopkins done for any team? Everybody got mad at O'Brien, the coach of the uh, Texans, when he got rid of DeAndre Hopkins because DeAndre Hopkins went to Arizona and made a one-handed catch. How's Arizona doing now that they got rid of DeAndre Hopkins? How's Tennessee doing now that they got rid or now that they have DeAndre Hopkins? How's? Oh, I don't know. How's Houston doing now that they got rid of DeAndre Hopkins? You can tell me it's wrong. That's fine. I'll listen. Yeah, you do whatever you want. But how are they doing? The proof in the NFL is in the pudding. The Cowboys players have stunk. They're overpaid, overpriced. You saw that Diggs guy going nuts on a fan. You see Micah Parsons. All he does is talk, 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 trying to be a star. They're a mess. They don't care about football. That's losing your team. Here's Stephen A. comparing Jerry Jones to President Biden. Can't do that. I say this because I'm not joking when I say this. Um, I, I'm getting very, very worried about Jerry Jones because the only thing that's worse than the team's play is his press conferences or whatever you want to call it when he's in front of the reporters where he says one thing after another after another. I find myself thinking about you know, Joe Biden, w- before he backed out of uh, of running for reelection. And he's only listen, he's only one month. I think Jerry was one month older than 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 uh, uh, President Joe Biden for crying out loud. I remember when I was on the airwaves, literally, guys, nine, ten months ago. And I was like, yo, he, he, he can't he can't be the nominee. You ain't going to make it to the Democratic National Convention. Y'all got to change. Y'all got to do something to change. And I'm looking at Jerry 
And I find myself asking, where the hell is Stephen Jones? Where the hell are his family members? Who, who is it? I know he's the owner and the president and the GM and I get all that. But somebody in your inner circle has to be able to stop you from just adding just fuel to the fire because it is so bad right now. Dave literally took the fun out of it. I know you saw me with the. Yeah, I mean, it's a stupid analogy. I mean, he's the owner. I mean, what do you want to do? Guy can say he's the president. Yeah, but this dude's the owner. Yeah, that's dumb. All right, here's another dummy, Shannon Sharp. Uh, if you can understand what he says, good for you. But here's Shannon Sharp. The difference between what you said about uh, uh, President Biden and Jerry is that the big donors came in and say, President Biden, we're not going to donate unless you drop out. What did they Somebody say did to, Jerry, to Jerry to get Jerry to stop talking? <laughs> that's my point. That's my point. Can I just say one thing before you jump in here, Jeff, since sure. we keep referencing politics? I, sure. also have, I also have a fake statistic. So he said that they have, since those uh, Super Bowls in the 90s, they have the sixth best winning percentage. They actually have the 11th. I was yeah. going to say. So no I don't way. know. They were 500 forever. Since the 96th season. So I don't know how we went from <laughs> no six chance. to 11, but that's fake news right there. I, I wondered. I was oh, like, when he. Yeah, okay, great. Here's the idiot that is Ryan Clark commenting on this. This is where they find themselves. I believe the offseason was baffling for us all, and it was a conversation we continue to have. And obviously the outside perception is, why are you talking about the Dallas Cowboys all day? Number one, because the Dallas Cowboys talk about the Dallas Cowboys all day. So do you actually give us something to talk about? And one of those things said by Jerry Jones was that they were going to be all in. And now all we've gotten this season as this team has continued to regress was that we couldn't do X, Y, and Z because of this. All we've gotten is excuses. We haven't found any solutions. We haven't found any answers. I had a homeboy one time in training camp, and he was going to miss curfew. And on the way back, he just wrecked his car on purpose. Because he said, if I wreck my car on purpose, I got an then at least I got an excuse why I ain't here. Right now, Jerry Jones has been wrecking this car on purpose this entire season. What about He's been trying to give us an excuse as to why he didn't go out and make this team a championship contender. How did? It's hard. Yeah, Jerry Jones has a billion-dollar industry, and he's wrecking it on purpose. All right, we'll continue with the stupidity because, well, what the hell else we got to do? Look, Jerry Jones got a bad team. Jerry Jones made bad contracts. Jerry Jones has players that went out allegedly after the game and filmed <laughs> filmed a music video. The guy Diggs and one of the other idiots there. And they have a coach that has allowed Zeke Elliott and others to show up late. Jerry Jones isn't wrecking nothing. I mean, I get it, the morons on ESPN. They can't talk about what's real. The players suck. The good players that every team will take sucks. It's not changing. What I watched the other day was embarrassing for the NFL. What I watched the other day was a bunch of players with no pride. You can blame the coach. Hell, middle-aged white guy, you got to blame him. Why wouldn't you blame him? You got to blame the owner. Why wouldn't you blame him? But the one thing I've noticed in the NFL, man, is nobody ever wants to blame the players. Nobody ever wants to blame, hey, Diggs, you suck. You didn't even try. I mean, if you watch that film as a coach, there is no way in hell that that Diggs, who's supposed to be an all-pro corner, tried. I didn't even see Micah Parsons. I know on TV they talked about him because they don't want to be talked about. Uh, I got to tell you, all C.D. Lamb was bitching, whining, and moaning to the point where my wife, who didn't know it was C.D. Lamb, said, who's that guy? What's that pain in the ass doing? Now, stop. I get it. In the NFL, we got to blame some ancillary group. If it's an African-American coach that's on the wrong side of the media, we can get after him. But hey, you got Jerry Jones, old white man, Mike McCarthy, old white man, easy for that crew at ESPN to blame him. Now, Jerry Jones brings it on himself. We understand that. Everybody understands that. But the truth of the matter is these players suck, and they got no pride. Well, who brought the players in, Dawkins? That's why I prefaced my other one by saying every team in the league would take Jones just has them. Jones just coddled them to the point. I mean, this is amazing. I don't know whether it's true. I saw it on Twitter, so it must be true. Players making a music video after getting their ass kicked. Oh, good. Here is a screenshot of the list, at least on Twitter. It says lewd. It's a lewd list, really. 
Uh, Dak out for the season. Lamb can't play quarterback and wide receiver. And I would add Lamb is a complete pain in the ass that believes his own bullshit. I know he may go give out turkeys for Christmas or Thanksgiving because that's what his agent told him to do. I get all that crap. You guys fall for it. Uh, Cooper Rush is horrendous. The offensive line. Wait a second. I thought Zach Martin's a legend. Everybody tells me, ah, he's a legend. No, not really. Uh, USFL level wide receiver room. Zeke is ass. Uh, McCarthy is fat. Jones is a moron. But hey, at least they got the best kicker in the league. That dude kicked a 64 yarder. I told Lee this used to be the record. Huh. Speaking of players being pains in the ass, this was the I don't have overreaction Mondays like a lot of places do. Because nine out of ten times, I'm telling you what's going to happen before it does. I have yelled, screamed, bitched, whined, and moaned, been very public, including when my co-host at Mike and Mike and other shows, that Paul George is a complete fraud. Paul George was a really nice kid. He used to sit next to me, and he would co-host my show with me a couple times. Very nice young man. And then he became a star. And like all the idiots on the Dallas Cowboys, he became something that he wasn't. In his mind, bigger, better than the franchise. Okay. So Paul George, I watched him play. He's really good. But as the time moved on, he had an injury. He became a diva. So Paul George moved on. Now he's with the Sixers. And he's paired up with another diva. Now remember this. When people and players, this can be in business, this can be anywhere, are pains in the ass, they always look for affirmation from somebody else. When guys are leaders... Hey, man, they just do their thing. But when guys are painted in the ass and they're bitching, whining, and moaning, you know what? They're always trying to bring somebody in their group. That's exactly who Paul George is, and he found a dummy. He found a dummy, and his name is Joel Embiid. And Paul George latched on to Joel Embiid, honest to God, and what we got? What do we got here? We got a 2-11 and start, last place in the East. The other star, Tyrese Maxey, Paul George, and Embiid have yet to play a game together. Sixers held a team meeting. Tyrese Maxey allegedly called Embiid out for his ridiculous behavior, including not showing up on time. In the meeting, Maxey challenged Embiid to be on time for team activities. I mean, what's Nick Nurse doing? Calling out the former league MVP about being late for everything and how it impacts the locker room. From other players to the coaching staff, Sources briefed on the meeting told ESPN, Tyrese loves the big fella. But this is the elephant in the room. A person involved in the meeting told ESPN. This this is always funny to me. Players told 76ers coach Nick Nurse that they wanted to be coached harder. Coaches, in turn, said they want players to practice with purpose and attention to detail. This is the analytics world that crushes your soul. And B accepted the message sent in the meeting, but he stated he's confused about what the Sixers are attempting to execute on the coach that on the court. That is always I could have closed my eyes and said to you, he accepted the message, but I don't know what we're doing out there. Uh-huh. Well, you don't play, son. You don't practice. You don't show up for meetings, son. You're late to everything, son, which means you're distracted, son. I mean, if you want to be a pro, son, if you want to be a great pro, if you want to win, son. Then you show up on time. Actually, you don't. You show up way early, son, and you'll know what's going on in the court. See over there? There's about 8 million little white guys with shaved heads dying to work you out. But you don't ever work out. You're fat. No, you're fat. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? You're fat. And so I knew this was coming. And Beeb accepted the message sent, but, well, I'm confused. Well, you don't come to meetings. I mean, that's pretty simple. I mean, look, anybody with a first-grade education, which most of these have, that played sports will say, yeah, well, if it is such a concern that you show up on time and do things right, that means you're distracted. That means when we put a new set in or we move you to a particular spot, sure, you're there. All right, you're listening, but are you really hearing? No, I got it backwards. You're hearing... But are you really listening? No. No. So I don't want to hear it from Embiid. You do, 
Because, man, hey, he's Joel Embiid, man. He's really good. He sucks. The whole league sucks. If you went to every single team in the league, with the possible exception of the Boston Celtics, this shit's happening. Everyone. The league is all ran by soft-ass coaches with soft-ass, man, I played in the league, yo, assistants, analytic boys and girls running the show, and it sucks, period. I got to tell you, the other day, in fact, a couple days ago, I said this. I was turned on the Pacers game, and I couldn't tell if it was a guys or girls game. I couldn't. I, guys look like chicks now. They do. Or chicks look like guys now. I don't know. But women have always had long hair. Women have always looked effeminate. Now I turn to NBA game, and I'm like, wow, maybe it's just old man screaming at the clouds. I think that's what it is. But I got to tell you, 2-11, and 11, last place in the East? Huh. I hope it continues. I do. I really do. I hope it continues because I don't like him. There, I do not I do not like Paul George. I do like Tyrese Maxey. I don't know Nick Nurse, but I do not like Joel Embiid's fat ass. Not a pro. Be a pro. Utah State University, home of my buddy Mike Paulson, one of the schools that forfeited against San Jose State, San Jose State in volleyball due to the presence of a transgender volleyball player named Blair Fleming, is seeking to join the lawsuit as a plaintiff against the conference. People are suing the Mountain West. Like, what are you doing letting a dude play? Hey, yo, Kamish. You're letting a dude play? I get it. You're a middle-aged white guy. I get it, you know, but you're letting a dude play? What are you doing? I mean, that's, you know. Uh, as, as the school filed a motion to intervene on Monday evening, the lawsuit alleges, among other things, Mountain West hastily, you know they did this, oh, crap, we got a chick. We got a chick playing at San Jose, but he's really a dude. What are we going to do? I don't know. Get a policy. We got to have a policy. The lawsuit alleged, among other things, that the Mountain West hastily adopted a transgender participation policy. Here's what the policy should say. Every transgender athlete is welcome in our conference, and you are more than welcome to play in the men's sport. Regardless of your biological sex. What you claim to be, you are allowed to play. We love our transgender community. Play against the men. We are inclusive. Play against the men. I don't know. Legal edges, among other things, that the Mountain West hastily adopted, hey, man, we got to get a policy. Get some lot more white guys in here to punish teams for forfeiting games against Saint, uh, San Jose. Sue claims Title IX violations that force women to be to compete against a biological male in Blair Fleming. Several Utah politicians, including the governor, Spencer Cox, state uh, Senate President Jay Stewart Adams, House Speaker Mike Schultz, urged the school to join the lawsuit earlier Monday. Proposed petition does not guarantee that Utah State will be added as a plaintiff. Rather, a judge will review the petition and make a decision on whether they have due cause to be added. Yeah, good. It's simple. You won't get sued. Play against the men. But but no, there's no, there's no, there's nothing set in stone that everybody's got to play against the women. And this is so simple. I should run everybody's life. Seriously. I should be America's father. Wait a second. Mamala. I could be Demala. Dana Dada. Mamala Harris. What an idiot. Uh, Hall of Famer, Pro Football Hall of Famer, and friend of the program, he's been on a couple times, Brian Erlacher, suggested no one is scared anymore to show their support for President-elect Donald Trump. And that's what's being seen all across the country. We've seen all of this. We've seen players raise their shirt. Here's why. I'm gonna, we're going to hear from uh, Erlacher in a second, but let me ask you a question. And I think I talked about this yesterday. I put this out in a tweet. Who are you scared of? What, little fat Benny Koo is going to write an article with his guys at Awful Announcing? Okay. Really? The local douchebag creeper columnist at your local Gannett paper is going to write an article about you? We've seen that with Greg Doyle. Okay. All right. I mean, okay. The guy or girl, Sarah Spain, is going to talk about you negatively? Oh. Mike Freeman's going to write an article. All the race baiters are going to get angry with you. Uh, They've all been neutered. People don't care. People don't care what the USA Today racist columnist Mike Freeman has to say. People don't care 
what Bomani Jones has to say. They don't care. Some care what Stephen A. Smith has to say, but it does not have a lasting impact. I've said forever, a couple years ago, Greg Doyle wrote a scathing piece on me. I'm the worst human being alive. Right after that, my popularity increased even more here in the great city of Indianapolis. Now it's even more. People don't care. Okay, Greg Doyle's mad at you. Great. Mike Lupica's mad at you. I'm going old school. Great. Some guy at the Chicago Sun-Times is mad at you. Great. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Power just went out at my house. What the absolute... Somebody talk to me. We're good. We guess still got you. Oh, we're good? Oh, okay. Uh, power did go out of my house. We'll be on the generator. Hopefully it'll come back on. I don't care. Why would anybody care? So here's what Erlacher had to say. The, uh, since the inauguration was, or not inauguration, the voting was over. Anyway, I think just the excitement, you can see it, not just with football players. You see John Jones doing it. I haven't seen anyone in the NBA do it, but I don't watch NBA anyway, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. But uh, I just think the pure excitement of everyone for what happened and what's going to happen is taking over right now. It is. It's, it's been done in the LPGA Tour. They're even doing it over in soccer games in Europe. That's how big it is. It's a cultural phenomenon. There's no stopping it. What do you think kept it bottled up? Was it just this explosion after the win? I think people were scared for a while. You know, I think you don't, you don't want people to, to talk bad about you. We know how we've, we've been talked about the last four years if you're a Donald Trump supporter. But I think now no one's scared anymore. It's nice to see these guys coming out and everyone who's but maybe a silent Trump supporter. You know, I, he under polls always. You see that. The, I, I was pretty sure when the, the polls had him in even, he was going to win because he always under polls. Those people are scared to say they're going to vote for him. So I think they're just excited now that, that he got the job done and he's going to get the job done in the next four years. And the crew with them. It keeps getting bigger and more interesting. It's like, it's like when you roll something down the hill, it just keeps gathering mass and steam. How do you think the country's interpreting, you know, his, his gang uh, that, that now goes everywhere with them? I know how I'm interpreting it. I'm not sure how some people are, but I know I'm excited about it. You know, I'm, I don't think too many people are happy about Matt Gates going to be the AG. There's some uh, people a little nervous about that, but I, I like every pick he's had so far. It's been fun to watch. Uh, who knows what's coming next, but it's like the Avengers, right? He has all these guys with him and, and women as well. I like get the fight. He had the whole crew with him. It's just awesome to see the excitement that when he walked into Master Square Garden, it was unbelievable, the excitement of that place. So it's been a cool two weeks, man. It sure has. It's even fun to see little Mike Johnson there. Probably his first UFC fight. But uh, it looked like he, even he was having fun. He's got a lot riding on his plate. How could too. you not? <laughs>